what is open return? Here's a... So the issues with submitting and text files. Um, so the, the, the list of it, of submitting and text files, um, there's a posting, 297. Um, one thing you can do, uh, you know, basically, you guys are, are submitting files with Windows line endings on. And um, the two ways around it are to change your preferences in the Spider IDE. You can look at posting 296 or 297 for that. If you if you search for uh, if you if you go to the FAC um, and and it's the last one on on submitting issues, it'll point you right to it. So just you know just filter on FAC. There's only about four of them, and and one of those the the, the latest one should have uh, directions on how to get to uh, setting up your preferences in the in the in the Spider IDE. Um, if you're still having problems then download Notepad++. Not Notepad, Notepad++. Notepad++ also allows you to control the line endings. It's under, um, let me see if I can bring this up. Hmm, where's my Notepad++? There we go. If you come in on the notepad and uh, you go to settings and preferences, and uh, new document, settings, preferences, new document, click this. Unix line feed and then every time you create a new document it will get rid of all the slash R's and you shouldn't have any problems okay um, decode is not all that important but decode takes data and if it can convert it to uh, a string or to appropriate data format it does uh, for this particular one it takes something that's in binary format um, which is only moderately different from a string um, it's it's a, considered an array of bytes as opposed to an array of characters and converts it over to a string. Um, it's, it was just for uh, for appearance's sake. Uh, if, you, if you notice, we had that. Uh, um, this B. Dot, that's saying this is binary format data. And I just didn't like the B dot there, so I took it off. Uh, and I did that by, by doing a, a conversion using the decode. It's... We would not mark you off if you didn't have that on, uh, unless you were doing it in Submit, and, and uh, we actually expected you to. We uh, you actually had the feedback uh, that it was wrong. Okay. Thank you, Kristen. Another fine job. Did I hit everything? I think. Sure, shoot. I'm Is what? I'm sorry, just uh I, I missed the first part of that. You were fading. So we wouldn't ask you to do all of homework five on a test, but we might ask you to do something like find you know, find the, the local peak or, or find a path. I mean, you know, uh, a subset of, of homework five would, would definitely be something that you might find on the test. We wouldn't ask the whole thing. The whole thing we would expect would take much longer than, uh, than, what, we're at, than what we're giving you. But, you know, an algorithm to, to search, you know, to return the neighbors and then, you know, search or, or, and or search over a list and look for the maximum, you know, that, that would certainly is, would fall within... Uh, within something that could could be asked so not you know don't expect something as long as five but be able to do all the pieces of five in case we ask you any any uh any individual part of it does that make sense all right anything else if not i am yeah go ahead sure
No. I mean, if you have the right alg, you know, if you have an algorithm that works, and it works for the general case, don't just code to the specifics of the test, you know, or the specifics of the, you know, don't just do a four by three grid or something like that. You should be you should be able to handle arbitrary grid sizes and things, um, you know, or or you know, you should be able to handle thirty grids instead of just uh, just two or three, whatever we have there. Um, but no, it, it, we don't we don't actually look at the complexity of. We look at the complexity of your solution, but we accept complex, uh, overly complex solutions as perfectly valid solutions uh, for people who are just learning. So that, that won't be a problem. Uh, we, I'm going to give you one caveat. As we move later in the semester, when we start talking about dictionaries, um, there are, di there are dictionary-based algorithms that are very efficient versus list-based algorithms that are not efficient. And if you get the wrong, if, you, if you're not doing it using dictionaries the way we tell you, then we will, we will trigger on that because it'll cause a, it'll cause a timeout on submitting. And that's, that's intentional. Um, but yeah, as, as long as your, your solution is correct uh, and doesn't use, and uses you know, the, the pieces that we tell you to use, everything's fine. Does that make sense? You're welcome. All right, anything else before I pop into a different meeting? Sorry about this, guys. I don't like cutting you short, but we have plenty of time before the test. Um, I don't think I have anything next Monday yet, at least. All right. Sure. Sure. So, are you are you stripping or, or otherwise modifying that value? Before you, if you're comparing against, I mean, what are you comparing against? Are you comparing against n or? Okay. I mean, you know, it, it sounds like that should work. So um, I would test to see, you know, before the if statement, print out both sides of that, both sides of the of the relational, because um, because something's not, you know. Either that or, or um, the only other op option is that you're doing the print outside of the if statement and it doesn't matter which side you go down. Okay. Um, it, it sounds to me like you're always going into the Y branch. So I would print out your values before there and see if you can figure out why the Y branch is always being taken. Okay, so, so you know, both sides are relational, you know. Um, You know, if you have an and in there, or, or, or yeah, okay, yeah, no problem. All right, bye guys. I'll see you on Monday.